Hello to my wonderful art students. It's Mrs. Sintner coming to you from my studio at home. I miss you so much. I miss being in the art room at school, but I'm so grateful that we're able to do distance learning and be able to make art together. So today we are going to learn about a San Antonio artist, and that was my whole month of April. I picked San Antonio artists to feature. You will be learning about Brooke Rosser, she's an amazing artist, and we're gonna do a really fun piece. I also want to remind you before we begin that this is a time for you to express yourself. I don't want you to worry about if you have the supplies that I have. I've just pulled together things I could find around the house. So if you don't have what I have, that's okay. Use what you have and get creative and use your imagination. That is the most fun about putting together art is using what you can put together and make it beautiful. So I'm excited to see what you do with it. And I also want you to know this lesson is specifically for third grade. So this lesson I have designed for you guys, but you are welcome to go in and do any of the other lessons that I have created for the April 2020 distance learning lesson. The artist that we will be learning about this month is Brooke Rosser. She grew up in San Antonio and has made her home in our beautiful city. She attended St. Luke's Episcopal School and then moved on to Alamo Heights for sixth grade through high school. She shared some wonderful childhood memories with me. When she was in elementary school, they made lots of arts and crafts. She loved art. Her mom is an artist. So she grew up watching her create art. They had summer day camps at her house and they always played with tie dye and clay and collage. One time they made dresses out of newspaper and had a fashion show. That sounds like a lot of fun. She also took her to Saturday morning discovery every week. It was a free art program for kids at the Southwest School of Art. She always took art for electives in school. When she was in high school, her social life became of more interest to her, but she rediscovered her love for art, especially oil painting at UT Austin, where she majored in art and graphic design. When she graduated, she got a job as a graphic designer at a local agency and then at the San Antonio Light, which is another newspaper that we used to have in San Antonio. She said, I got to create so many fun illustrations and learn computer software for graphic design. After two years, the newspaper business was going into a decline, so she moved to Lubbock to go to graduate school and study painting and drawing at Texas Tech University. So after Brooke graduated, she moved back home to San Antonio, got married, and had some art exhibits. She also taught art in different places. She got a full-time job teaching graphic design at San Antonio College in 1998. She had two babies during the next eight years and then ran into Ana Montoya with Ann Arte Gallery. Anna gave her an art exhibit with a friend named Wendy Thorne, and she has represented Brooke ever since. She has sold so much art through Ann Arte Gallery and has been able to share art with so many people. Brooke's paintings and drawings have been exhibited in both group and solo exhibitions, as well as juried art shows. An Arte Gallery, Carrington Gallagher Gallery, Blue Star, University Autonoma de Mexico, Southwest School of Arts and Crafts, St. Mary's University, the Lubbock Fine Arts Center, Texas Tech University, the University of Texas at Tyler, and Arizona State University's Institute for Humanities and Research. Her work has been acquired for both private and corporate collections, such as the University Hospital's Health System, Robert B. Green Research Facility in San Antonio, Texas. Brooke's mixed media paintings seek to reflect love, challenges, and dreams, blending both private and mythic images. Her love of folk art and color is evident in her work, which constantly searches out new ways to explore the wonder and enchantment of living. These pictures look small, but the art that she makes is actually quite huge. Some of the pieces are taller than most fifth graders. I love that lion. 
I threw in some of these for you that might be missing Fiesta this month. <laughs> I thought that was a great thing to add in. If you want to look at other pieces by Brooke Rosser and continue making more art after our art lesson, she also has an amazing Instagram account and a website, brookrosser.com. Most of her art I found on the Arte Gallery. This piece is called Hand Peacock, and we will be using it as our inspiration for our art today. As far as art supplies, I want you to start brainstorming and getting creative. Think of what you might have around the house to recreate this piece yourself and gather it all together so we can get started and use your imagination. I am going to use aluminum foil. I have pipe cleaners. I took paper and cut strips. So you can take paper, if you don't have construction paper that you can cut out strips, then color paper with markers or pencils and then cut out some strips because this is gonna be an easy way we're going to do this. I have cut out ahead of time. So if you can do this for on that peacock where the um, teardrop comes up, I have a picture of it right here for us to work on. There's like a teardrop, there's 10 little teardrops. So I cut those out ahead of time so that we will be able to use them here. So I found some paper and just cut out little teardrops that we'll be able to decorate and then glue them on. And I also thought this would be really fun to do. I got three pieces of paper and I traced our hands in order to be able to stack and layer our peacock. So I have my husband's hand, my hand, and Eli's hand. So if you have more people in your house, you could use all different colors of paper to make a beautiful peacock with all of your hands that can be your memory during this time that we are all indoors for distance learning. So I'm gonna use Eli's hand as the one that we will use the strips of paper to crisscross and hatch across here to make it like this. And then the other peacock hands will come up behind it. So if you have family members, just make sure that you all trace the same hand and that your fingers are about the same apart. I also have glue sticks. I have some paint and a paper towel I'm gonna to use. That'll be easier than a paintbrush. And I found some of that glitter glue, kind of Elmer's glitter glue. I also have some nail polish that's kind of glittery that I found. You could use nail polish for a lot of this for the glittery colors. Um, I also have, um, there's some white on there and I didn't have a white paint. So I have, if you have a white paint pen or white of any kind, I found white out and we'll use that. Um, I also have Sharpies out. I have a whole bunch of them ready to go for all the colors that I might want to draw in. And I also used a really big piece of cardboard that I painted with just, um, this is the piece of cardboard I have and I painted it white so that it just had a solid white surface to begin painting on. So if you have white paint, that's great. Just get it ready to go. If you don't have white paint, you could lay out white paper on a piece of construction paper and tape it around the back. I want you to use the supplies that you have and then we will move into our art lesson in just a little bit. But some of the last things I want to tell you are the cool part about having class like this is that you can hit pause anytime you need to to catch up. You can um, go get a snack or have a little bit of a break or let your stuff dry and come back to it. I also want you to know that no matter what you do, it's going to be a beautiful masterpiece and I'm super excited about it. It may not look just like mine. We have to work with what we have. And my hope is that while we're still making art together, we can encourage one another and encourage our friends. So at the end, I will remind you of this, but we do want you to um, sign your art. We want you to post it and like this video and then post your art online and you can use the hashtag saddle up Mavs or hashtag rooted oak meadow and all that posting keeps us connected and we can encourage each other and encourage our friends so let's go make some art
So I hope you have been able to gather together the supplies that we will need for our lesson. Let me switch to desk view so that you can watch along with me. So I have the cardboard that I painted. I just used um, white kills. You can use any kind of white paint if you don't have paint. If you don't have, just grab a piece of cardboard off of a box. Um, put some white paper over it. Just use your imagination and get creative. If you have to draw the whole thing with markers because you don't have colored paper or construction paper of any kind, that's fine too. So just do what you can with what you have. I'm so excited to do this lesson together. So first things first, I have the smallest hand here, which is Eli's hand. And before I cut it out, I have decided that the smartest thing to do would be to use these strips of colored paper on the back side. I'm going to cut out about as much of it as I can. So I'm not using so much paper that I really don't need. I'm going to cut a little bit along. Eli's hand to create the look of our peacock. And I can kind of tell where my strip should go. Okay, I'll set that aside. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to put my strips over his hand because then I won't be able to see it to cut it out. So I'm going to flip it over and we're just going to use it the other way. And then when I cut the hands out, we'll just have our um, right hand become left handed and have the thumb on the same side that our artist used. So when you're tracing your hand, you might want to do the same thing when you're tracing your right hand and end up flipping it over because it'll be a left hand. So I'm going to take some glue stick and just start placing these Get some glue on here. My puppy is in here with me and he is fooling around. So I'm sorry that you can hear all the puppy noises in the background. He is wide awake with me. Okay, so I've put plenty of glue on here. You can use whatever glue you have. And then I'm just gonna start placing little strips across my paper here. I'm going to go at all different kinds of fun angles, cross them over one another. She's got this really great design on her, so I'm just going to switch up colors and move them can't do exactly what she's done, but we'll do the best that we can, creating a really fun layered look and design. So if you don't have colored paper, you could always use pencils and markers and color paper and cut out some strips just to give you some dimension and texture to your art. So when you go over a second layer, you're gonna to need to glue on there as well. There's all kinds of fun shapes going around, so I might wanna have so I can start to put some of these at different angles. Put some glue on here. So just keep pasting down your strips. 
all the way around and get some really fun, funky patterns and designs going. Trying to mix it up a little bit. I already used that color. I've already used yellow. Got orange right there. I have green. This darker red I haven't used. This is like a hot pink magenta kind of color. So that's fun. Cutting it off at the middle area here because our peacock is going to cover that up anyways. Our, the head of our peacock and all the decoration will get covered up. Let's see, here we go. Just keep making a really fun design. Bringing it all together. So I thought this would be easier to do and let it dry and then cut it out rather than trying to draw in or paste in little bitty teeny tiny shapes. I did not think that that would be as easy as doing this and then cutting it out all together. Don't know why I'm still holding um, that's why. Why am I still holding that glue? Okay, so I'm gonna move up the lines up here all seem to be going a little bit horizontal, so I'm gonna move up here into this area and start to put some in a horizontal position. Now my dog has decided to come over here next to me, <laughs> lay down. I wish I could show him to you guys. He's super cute. You've probably seen him in the car line or something. He likes to come to school and pick up Eli. It's a really happy dog. We got him at eight weeks old and he named him Jersey because we love to go to New, Jer New Jersey on vacation every summer. And Eli's daddy is from New Jersey. And he grew up spending all of his time on the Jersey Shore as a kid. So we thought it would be a good thing to name our dog after one of our favorite, favorite things to do. Go to the Jersey Shore. Okay, Let's see if I can bring in some light blue up here. So you guys can do this as well. Go through each of your pieces and just make these fun stacked up areas full of colors. If you just want to use markers, my glue just gave up to start another one. This is what happens when I bring supplies home from school and people put the glue back into the bins when they're empty. Okay, this is looking kind of fun. We've got some really fun shapes going on. The only part I really don't have covered up is over here. So I'm going to come in here. It's kind of like a little basket weaving looking thing almost. Tuck that in under there a little bit. Some yellow. Okay. So you guys, um, I think I was saying, if you want to just color yours and you don't want to do all these strips like this, that's fine. Do what you are in the mood to do. I just think that any art that we are making during this time of distance learning, it's something, especially this with the handprints, it's a beautiful memory that you will be able to hang on to for many years to come and it'll always be something that you can remember being home with your family, all of you holding hands together, everybody being close and 
supporting one another through kind of tough time and for some of you i'm sure just being cooped up inside eli's about had enough of the being cooped up inside okay so i know this is not looking that good with all of this stacked on here but i'm hoping at the end of it that it's going to look fantastic so i'm going to get one more little piece down here possibly two if i can layer them All righty, here we go. So I just think it's worth it to take the time while we have the time to really go through and make this piece of art absolutely fantastic and add in all kinds of fun colors and especially that it seems like we're in fiesta time right now or missing fiesta time, I guess I should say. So I might want to add one more cross piece right there. What color do I want to use? I think probably this red. So let me just stick that in like this. Okay. Alrighty, so I'm going to let that sit there for a second and dry a little bit before I start cutting on it because I don't want to mess up all the pieces but once I flip it over see I'm going to be able to cut around the hand and then when we're done we'll have all that pattern that'll look really similar to this it's not quite exactly the same but it'll be close so I'm going to let that dry a little bit while I start to work on my teardrops. So I had asked you before we got going in the lesson to cut out, they kind of look like little cactus toppers. But if you will draw like a teardrop or a little raindrop on a piece of paper, I did one and circle around to a point for a teardrop. And then I used that one as my stencil so that I could just go over and over and over again just tracing out like that around and I traced out 10 of them and I just went across each one tracing and tracing all of them I also ended up doing the fun little shape that she has on here that's sticking out of each one of these I don't know if you can see that let me move it up a little bit closer so there's these little things that are like sticking off of here. So I made those. You don't have to make those if you don't want to. I just left a little area to kind of cut that. They look like little cactus pods. Okay, so I have those ready to go. If you will trace those and cut them out, then they will be ready to go. And I'm thinking they all seem to have their little swooshy heading to the left. I didn't do one on that one because it was my first one and I hadn't thought about that yet. But I want to get all of these laid out so I can start to use some markers and color in designs on them. So I have shiny markers and I have regular markers. So the first thing I'm going to do is with my silver marker, I'm just going to trace inside of each one and try to keep all of the patterns pretty similar. And I might make a little circle in the middle of each one because peacock feathers have that and they're super fun. It's a really fun mixed media project to do. Okay, then I'm gonna just grab a variety of colors of marker um, and just see what all I have here that I can add in because she's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven or twelve different colors. I probably won't use quite that many. I might repeat some on the way around. 
Probably get one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have those ten. You can do that. So I'm going to try and stick in the same spot with each one with the shape going around. So if I do yellow here on each one, come here, then I'll just help it go faster. I'll do it like an assembly line. You guys can do this at home. Just do like a little assembly line. Probably not really smart for me to be doing this right on top of my white that I have painted because if I mess it up, it's gonna show through, so I need to be really careful. So I'm coloring each one of them with my yellow. not being too careful trying to go kind of quickly so there we go oh, there's a hot pink in here i can do that next so i'm going to make a bigger section and fill it in with hot pink So go all the way around coloring each one the same. Just try to go as quickly as you can so we can, well, I'm going quick. You can hit pause. <laughs> okay, so pink, orange, which looks kind of brown. It's blue and orange are complementary colors that turns brown. So there you go, that just turned brown. Do you remember learning in art about complementary colors when they are across from one another on the color wheel? You mix them together and you get some shade of brown or some kind of funky dark gray. Okay, next color choice, I'll go with purple, that's fine. Just whatever is next on my... stack of markers. Yeah, I just got it on my white paper and that was what I didn't want to have happen. And I did it again. So there's my purple. I can use green. So just go around, color them in. If you don't have Sharpie markers, but you have Crayola markers or colored pencils, anything that you can work with to do your artist completely fine. Please use whatever you have on hand. Love her art because it looks like Fiesta and it's so bright and colorful. You can go look online at her 
website or go follow her on Instagram and see all of the really fun art. It's very whimsical and folksy, very bright colors, very fiesta looking. Missed Fiesta this year. Cannot wait to see what you guys do with this art lesson. And if you decide to tackle having multiple handprints from your family and keep it as a memory, I think that would be a great idea. That's what we're doing. Okay. I'm worried about time, so I'm trying to speed it up, and I'm not even making them as filled in as I did on the front end. I'm letting some of that teal paper show through. So you color yours, hit pause anytime that you need to. That's completely fine. So start to think about any other art items that you might have in your house. If you have any glittery beads or buttons, if you have glitter glue, if you have glitter itself and you could just squirt some glue down and sprinkle glitter on top of it, that would be fine too. We will want to add some buttons or decor. I don't have any buttons, but I'm going to use, um, interestingly enough, I'm going to use nail polish that has glitter in it, and I have some glitter glue. So that's what my options are going to be. Okay, these are super fun little peacock feathers. I think Brooke has a fantastic imagination. And then I'll use this teal, which is actually my favorite color to come and just make some design inside of this and go around that silver circle. So then I can fill in the silver circle with a glittery something to make it shine. Can't wait to see you post your art online and see how creative that you guys got with this. You can also let me know if you think we should add this in as a lesson for school next year. Okay, so I have those ready, but I'm not going to put my glue dot with glitter on until we're at the last steps. If you don't have pipe cleaners for these um, longer pieces behind it. I just had pipe cleaners. You could use ribbon or string or anything. That just happens to be what I had. Okay, so I'm wondering, I'm going to cut these hands out and let that dry a little bit more. So I'm going to cut out my hand.
I have my hand cut out. I'm trying to go quickly. You can certainly take your time. That might be good as a piece for something, and so might that for some glittery paper. And then I will get my husband's hand. Uh oh, my foil just fell on the floor. Okay, getting close to the end of the cutting out of the hand. So the next thing, any prep work that I can do before, oh, I need to paint this board. So that will be the next thing I'll do. I'm going to add just some light blue paint, kind of a cloud surface. Her art had that like a cloudy look to it. So I'm going to do the same thing to the background after I have all of this cut out. And the good part about that is it'll also make the surface a little bit easier to affix things to. That paint will be a little bit sticky. So whatever color you have, if you don't have blue or if you have a darker blue and you want to mix some white with it to lighten it up and tint it, you can do that as well. of my mess. Okay. So here is my blue paint. I have my two hands cut out and I'm going to let that third hand, Eli's hand, continue to dry a little bit more. So I'm going to squirt some of my blue paint into my tray and then I'm just going to use a paper towel to help make the cloudy parts. So I'm just gonna gather together my paper towel here like this, just gather it together. I'm gonna dip it in this paint and then just start dabbing it around here to get a very soft cloud pattern going on. Keep dabbing it around. If you lose your little flowery design, get it back set up again. And just move the blue paint around. It doesn't have to be very thick. It doesn't have to be any kind of pattern or anything. Just get it spread. that you've got a good background going here. Very fun piece of art. If you want to play some music in the background, you can. I forgot to put some on today. I also forgot to put my smock on, which is not a very good idea when you're painting. So spread around on your surface. I don't know if your cardboard is as big as mine is, but <laughs> I have quite a big surface to fill in. So if you need to hit pause to keep up with me, that's fine. I try to work fast so this video isn't too, too long. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with that. And then I'm going to start cutting out Eli's hand. 
hands. And I'm gonna flip it over where I can see the outline of the hand and just, oops, I don't want to have any paint get on there. So I'm gonna move that aside. I'm gonna start cutting around his hand through all of these little pieces that I've made. Try and be very careful not to drop any of them off. Sweet little hand. I think this would be, if you're able to do it as a surprise, it would be a really great Mother's Day gift since Mother's Day is coming up really soon. You could have your whole family's hands all on top of one another. Okay, here we go with our last part of our hand. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Okay, there we go. So there is Eli's hand. Let me try to, whoopsies, push that back down. This part, I need to pop off. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Now let me throw this away. I'll bring my board back over here and we're going to get our peacock set up. And we want all of our hands to go in the same direction from largest to smallest. If you want to fan them a little bit, Let's see how this is going to work. Oh, so cute. Okay, so I'm going to do them like that. So I'm going to start with the first one and put glue on the back side of it. Here we go with more glue. <laughs> it's run out. I keep running out of glue. Grab another glue. That one looks pretty dry. That one's dry. Let's see if this one's okay. Oop. Okay, there we go. So I'll get this glue on here. And I'm gonna put this close to the bottom so I've got room to make the peacock fan out there. So I'm gonna try to get it centered as much as I can. And then press it down. And I'll put glue on my next hand. Make sure it's going to be going the correct way. Flip it over. Get your glue on it. Make sure to get all the way to the tips so that all the fingers will stay down well. If you have a glue gun, you could do that also. with your parents' help, most likely, because that gets really hot. And the last one I'm going to add is Eli's hand. I'm 
Okay. Here we go. I'm going to put him down here close to the bottom. So there's our little family. I think that turned out really neat. Now lift up these back fingers just a little bit because I'm going to need to be able to put those pipe planters behind it. Okay, so that is going to be my next step is deciding how long my pipe cleaners need to be. I don't want to go off the top and I really don't want them to get behind there. So I'm going to, you can use ribbon, you can use string, whatever you want to use, but I'm going to use that just to get behind like that, get them all measured out. See how they are a little bit at an angle. And they gradually go down. So cut those off. That in there just to get them set up well. Okay, guys, this is such a cute assignment. Okay, and the last one comes up about there. So we have them all set up. I have liquid glue for this to help them to stay where I put them. I think that a glue gun would work better if you happen to have one. I just don't have one. So I'm going to put glue here, kind of build it up around it um, so it gets onto the board and the finger, and I'm gonna to have to let that dry real well. So I'm building up a little pool of it around it and going over the edge in there and then pressing it down so they can dry in a little puddle. Dog is up again, so you're probably going to hear him in his collar until he finds a new place to lay down. So, okay, and then this one, I will, I don't know if you can see, I'm lifting up the finger and making a little puddle and setting it back down in it. And my last one. Making a little puddle around it. And pushing it down so it will all dry together. Okay, oh, I wanted that one up a little bit more. Okay, so that's that part. Don't move you. Then the next thing that we're going to do is take the feathers that we made earlier and we're going to glue those on. So there's two per pipe cleaner or ribbon, whatever you choose to use. So I'm going to do the same thing with the puddles. I'm going to make a puddle here so that it sticks on to the pipe cleaner and then this will stay right on top of there. Then I'm going to come up to the top, do the puddle so that my pipe cleaner has something to stick to the table and then I'll put that like that. So just keep repeating that as you go around. We're going to want to be really careful with this until it's fully dry. It's a great piece of art. So I'm letting that puddle go down onto the cardboard so I can Stick the pipe cleaner to the cardboard as well as the feather right onto the pipe cleaner with my puddles. This is such a fun piece of art. Okay, here we go. So can you see I'm letting it fall down around it? So this will stick there and it will keep the pipe cleaner still. 
And I'll have this one come down here. Huh. I made too many of them. So I think I will sub out this one that doesn't have feathers sticking off of it. And I'll put this on here. Okay, so there we go. Done with those. Then I want to cut out my peacock head. So you can see right here this cute little peacock head that's sticking up. So I'm going to, I want it to be where it's just pretty low. It's going to come, I might bring it to come up to about there to cover that little stacked paper up. So maybe about the height of my finger. I want it to come up about that high, so I'm going to cut me a little rectangle. Oh, to work around that. Cut me, come at an angle, up. You want to try to gently draw it on here before you cut it out. You can do that too. Trying not to mess up its little beak and tear that piece away. And this way I'll come up here and turn into the beak area. So here's my little peacock body and head and he's nice and shimmery. Trim that up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put glue here. How high up am I going to go? To about right there. And my peacock head is going to face that direction. Add a little bit more foil down here at the base. Okay, so now we want to start doing some decorating. With this, we're going to need to be really careful with. Just press it down and then leave it alone. Just make sure that they're joining on each other. Again, glue gun would have been a great thing to have. So I have nail polish. I have glitter. I have some more nail polish here. So I think these are fun little areas on here to use some of this coppery colored nail polish. You use whatever you have and I'm just going to make little teardrops with it. It's very old and extremely sticky so I'm not sure how much I'm going to get out of it. But I'm going to try because it's very similar in color. So you find what you have at your house and get creative, even if you're doing all of it with pencils and crayons and colors, that's gonna be fine. It's gonna look fantastic and I can't wait to see it. There we go. I think that Brooke Rosser is a super fun creative artist and I'm so glad that I was able to make a connection with her and build a lesson around her art for our students to focus on San Antonio artists and have a lot of fun doing something very creative. When you know that I get the hang of how to 
use this right here towards the end. <laughs> okay, and let me put one more. That's how she has hers. There's also some of this coppery color kind of drizzled around the head. So I think I could actually make that work without messing up the foil. How fun is that? And then down the front of the peacock where we can't really see it too well, there's some kind of shiny here. So I'll drop some more down there. Okay. Then the next thing I want to do is take some of this gold glitter, if I can get it out of here, if there's any left. I think it's kind of dry. That one's not going to work. Try. I'm going to just go with silver nail polish because I know I can use this. Use what you have, right? So I'm going to put some nail polish in there to make it shiny inside. This is fun, guys. Okay. All right. So, anywhere else that you might want to do any decorating, you certainly can. Just keep on going until you have something you really like. I think I might use this black nail polish to make an eyeball. And there is also some black in each of these little copper colored feathers. So I'm going to do that. Who knew that my nail polish was going to turn out to be something I could make art with? All right, I think I'm done. I really like it a lot. It's a really great inspired piece by Brooke Rosser the hand peacock. I hope you guys like yours and I cannot wait to see them. The, another thing I would really love for you to do is to sign your art. If you will use a marker down in the bottom right corner and just use a lot of flourish as you sign your name. You've worked really hard on this and you deserve to have a very big, fun signature to show it off. So the next thing we need for you to do is like this video at the bottom. And then if you will post it, uh, post your art, get a picture of it and post your art on Instagram or Facebook on the school page or the PTA page. You can use the hashtag Saddle Up Mavs or hashtag Rooted Oak Meadow and get it posted on there so we all can compliment your work. Do the same thing like we do in class where we encourage ourselves and we encourage our friends. And I cannot wait to see what you have done. I miss you guys and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye-bye.